and we're Lil Luthing with... Hey, I'm Grace Stammering from Guelph Guelph Guitar Care. Awesome. And so you are in how many how many square feet of uh, Luthen space? Uh, we estimated it to be about under 200-ish, but okay. we're always sneaking out little bits of the house here and there to facilitate good business. And so by those stairs and kind of the framing, I'm, I'm guessing that you're in a basement shop? This is the basement. This is my my stairway to my happy place. Okay. When I come down here, this is my zone. This is not the kid's zone anymore. Uh, so there's it's a forbidden realm for the children. Yeah. Well, they do sneak in uh-huh. and uh, to test things out. I've got a couple guitars that are old junkers that I let them practice uh-huh. their filing on. But uh-huh. other than that, they do not they do not touch client guitars. Absolutely Just not. Clear. How's uh? And, and you're up around the Great Lakes. How is humidity? Do you need to do anything uh, humidity-wise to mitigate over-humidification in the basement? Or? Should. Should. Yeah. It's kind of difficult to maintain anything. So we don't kind of adhere to a strict, um, yeah, strict humidity. Um, but if I'm going to be rebracing something or doing any heavy building, then I try to save it for the winter months because... It's just easier for the the climate accepts that better. Okay. And uh, so can you flip your camera for me? Let's see. Let's take a look at the shop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so, so stairs down, and then you walk right into, into our zone where we do our testing. There's our amps for running the car through. That's just my husband's old gear from when he used to play. A little listening, um, listening lounge there. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a right. There's a record player because we yeah. do use it ourselves sometimes. Awesome. Um. So in normal times, I'd have the client come down the steps and enter into the space, place the guitar, and then sit. We plug in, we play, and we talk about the guitar. Okay. See what's going on from the player's perspective. What do they see? What do you know? What are the issues? And so it's not normal times. Do you have a quarantine uh, policy in place? What? How are you? Are, how are you taking guitars in right now? Uh, that's a no go on that one, Ian. We're not taking on any guitars right now. No guitars coming in. So no, no guitars coming in. Okay. Um, I've got plans to build a big guitar case uh, shelf over on the other side of the stairs. Um, and that way I'll be able to have the guitars be quarantined for a few days to three days before I touch them, okay. at which point the guitars that are deemed clean will hit this wall, and that's where they'll wait for service. Awesome. So this is your, this is your incoming rack. Do you do, you do anything to uh, keep track of in, uh, incomings? Do you have, like, tickets? Do you do anything online to kind of, like, organize your time or is it is it just like they go on there and you just kind of work on them as you feel them it's all on the calendar on the calendar i go by what comes in the cases get tagged with names there's no real numbers the numbers start when i get the guitar done for invoicing and that's just for my records okay but it's a it's a first come first serve thing of course there are some uh you know, the schedule has a little bit of wiggle when there's something small that needs to be worked in, and I'm working on big jobs, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, How to treat everyone fair. So it's it's first come, first serve, no, kind of not interested in rush charges or pushing, you know, pushing people around to kind of, like, give uh, favoritism or anything like that. No, man. I mean, I'm, I'm just a teeny tiny home business, and... Uh, so far, this has just been a part-time thing. So I've been working at this business for, uh, what year is it now? 2020, uh, 2011, so nine years. Um, we've been part-timing it. We've also been growing our family at the same time. So this September is when it turns into a full-time business for me, when mm, we've gotten all three kids into school. Um, so at that time, you know, maybe we'll reassess how we take jobs in and schedule things. But okay. I'm really... I'm really looking forward to being full time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, flipping back around, we got like, uh, which one's your main? So to the left there, uh, mm-hmm. I, see, I see a Dremel, uh, a Dremel router base up there, 
And, yeah. And so, yeah, so I just made a couple shelves here. So I've got kind of chisel supplies and other stuff. Uh, um, so in the box there, I've got some chisels and planes. Ooh, where are those chisels from? Um, those are Lee Valley. We've, yeah. I, don't know if, I don't think you guys have Lee Valley, do you? Uh, we, we can certainly get them. Uh, those look really nice. Uh, Narex? The, the, the plane is also uh, Lee Valley. Is that a scraper plane or is that a... Is it a jack? I think it's just a little jack. jack. A little jack plane? Cool. And a couple little, uh, like a little rabbiting plane? That's right, yeah. It's a couple oh. trimmers, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What, what sharpening stones are you using? I'm sorry? What sharpening stones are you using? Uh, so extremely rarely used uh, water stones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, I, I got super uh, excited when I saw Tim Frick's interview with you that uh -huh. there's there's some serious some serious chisel knowledge and stone skills there. Well, yeah, when you go to Japan because you're because you're into chisels, like that's that's the next level. But it's, it surprised me how how uh, I don't want to say primitive, but there are some expensive sharpening systems out there. And Tim's just getting it done with regular old stones. I couldn't even believe he was like his his middle stone was two thousand, which just seems like like crazy talk to me. But he's getting it done, so I'm not going to argue with him. No way, man! It worked for centuries, and it's still working for Tim Frick. So yeah, don't argue with it. So what's what's down below the uh, the sharpening station there? Yeah, down below there, we've got my just a go bar deck. Uh huh. And then here's, I don't know, this is the bucket where I put parts for guitars that I'm working on. Awesome. So you bag, you bag your parts and, and throw them in there, and that's your kind of kind of catch-all for, for yeah, everything, your parts? Yeah, everything would be labeled and ready. Okay. Ooh, what's that little inspection lamp? Is that a... Yeah, okay. I don't know, just a $50 deal from the hardware store. Oh, Noma. I just thought, actually, I think... I think it might have, it's heavy duty, so I've got a couple of little baffles on it. Uh -huh. um, I just got it in case of, oh, because I wanted to up my photography game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, no, what's the, little, what's the little guy on the wire back there? Is there a little light bulb on, on the wire back, back in there? This one? Yeah, what's that? Is that, a, is that an inspection oh, light? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Um, but just an Ikea special. Oh. I think I'd like to get a smaller light bulb for it, but ultimately it's doing its job for me. Oh, I'm, can I put you down for a sec while I plug this in? It's got good lighting. Oh, yeah. And it's got a good range. You can get that. It goes in deep in the guitar, so it's... What's its... Uh, does it get hot? Or is, it, is it LED uh, enough to, to get, it's, get hot? It's up e. It's LED. I want to get a smaller LED for it, but here's the big kicker. This will be on the other side of the car, right? Uh-huh. I like that. Yeah. I'm being able to shut it off from the outside. Yeah. And who does, uh, who's the artist on your, uh, on your bench there? I see some, I see some pictures down on the, yeah. on the cabinet. Yeah. yeah that's my son, Paul. Uh, he's dabbling in portraits at this time. Oh, that's good. Also, yeah, some still life tool stuff. Uh -huh. Very important to get those uh, still life studies early. Absolutely. So, did you run all the electrical down there? Or was there a big project in just getting it to this to this spot where you've got you know good power run to all the different locations? Uh, yeah, we had a, an electrician come in and run some wires to where we asked him to. Well, we just basically got a receptacle on each wall. So, boom and boom and one. Of, where is that one, anyways? There's one on this wall. Oh, I remember it's down there, but we got the power cord uh -huh. there. And that's very sufficient. I think we had him add one light bulb over here uh -huh. and another one for over this bench. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, uh, might upgrade, I might get some of those. Um, have you seen? They're like the ballast lamps, they're LEDs. I, I think I could do with some more light in here. Yeah. Well, you got two great, great windows yeah. there. What what direction are those windows facing? Northish. Northish, okay. Um, so going back to your so to your right is that your main bench? Is this is this where where the guitar with the neck off? Is this where most of your work's getting done? This is my setup bench. So yeah, I'm set up for all 
most of my setup tools are here. Uh, yeah. So you got your nut files and you got, who did the, the logo? Who, who designed the logo for you? I did. You did? I, I think that's a great logo, by the way. I have no design skills, and when I see somebody that has a nice logo like that, it drives me crazy. It drives me even crazier when you when I find out you did it yourself. Are you trained in uh, graphic design or anything like that, or you just just shoot from the hip and that's what you got? <laughs> well, thanks for all that. Um, I feel like I've lived a few lives before this one. Uh -huh. um, and in one of them, I was doing, uh, I was working at a print shop, so I did a little bit of graphic stuff. But I've always been interested in that stuff. It's cool to see how simply you can get an idea across, right? It, it's, it's important. You know, like I, whenever I go about doing something like that, it's just clutter, clutter, clutter. And, it, you know, I think I'm being really fancy, and then I wind up with just incomprehensible gibberish at the end of it so um pair it down man you just need focus i do maybe we'll, we'll talk maybe i'll i got an idea for one maybe we'll talk after this and and uh, you can help me with it but the uh so you've got a couple different nut files you or you've got the uh you know kind of the original stu mac nut files although they're black black handle now and then you've got those what are the one red handle ones to the right there um, I got these mostly for use in bases. Uh, they're okay. the tapered ones, also from Sumac. Yeah, so almost yeah. like the old Ibanez style. So what's the guitar with the with the neck off? I know on your Instagram that was one that you were working on the bridge plate, and uh, and you did you make a new bridge for it? Yeah, that's a new bridge for it. Awesome. Yeah. It's um it's an old guitar that has been in my husband's family. I've Historically, I've done a neck reset on it, but uh, it was early days, so it's time for another updated skills neck reset. Yeah, and you know, I've had to do, I've had to redo neck resets, just, just, you know, lost angle. You know, it gets to the new angle, and then the guitar decides to, you know, make its own geometry again, and and uh, so it's not, it's not unheard of it for not, you know, not to have to do them again for, you know, not necessarily competency issues, but the guitars are just. They're uh, they're armory. So, but I would I, love I would love to get your opinion on this one because it feels like I calculated it, took everything apart, did my chiseling, and then got it on and went, holy crap! I've gone way too far. Yeah, it was a little overset. You know, like yeah, usually, usually I'm way too timid. So what happened the last time was I got it back on and it was exactly the same as after I took it off or as before I took it off. So now I've overdone it. So I think I might just I might just go forward, glue it up, and and deal with the emotional all the emotions that come with overdoing it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be good for my balance in the force. It could it could be. You know, the other thing I would say too is really look at the uh, really look at the glue joint on where the top and the neck block come together. Like yeah. if that glue joint is at all suspect. Uh, a lot of times I'll break that joint just so just so I'm done with it, and then I'll re-glue it, uh, and then I, at least I know that's that's solid. But you know, like that, when you're getting the neck off, that that joint right there receives a lot of heat, a lot of twisting, and it doesn't take much to like have kind of a joint that looks solid, but at the same time has you know flexibility to it. And especially if it was like an old done with white glue, I mean, forget about it. I'll break that and I'll break that joint and redo it with high glue, but. Uh, so you're 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 breaking this here between like the heel block and the the body or yeah between the neck block and the top that little that little line that's between the spruce and the neck block there yeah yeah i'll break ah. i'll break that free and reglue it a lot of times oh you don't say yeah because if that if that's if that's not working in there like if there's flexibility in there i mean it can really lead to neck angles pitching forward um yes that's so logical because it's getting all the same heat as the joint you want to release. Yeah. It's like, you know, like it's, a lot, it's along the same lines of, uh, you know, taking bridges off can often uh, weaken weaken the uh, the glue joint on the bridge plate too. It's something people don't think about when they're cooking cooking the shit out of bridges to get them off. So, oh, absolutely. You're totally right. Great perspective. Anyway, uh, moving on to the to the left there, you got a machinist toolbox. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because one of my in one of my past lives, I was a machinist. Really? Yeah. I went to college for machining. Um, 
graduated, everything, did my apprenticeship, and then that's when I decided that I would go learn how to make guitars and build and repair guitars. You, you think there's a lot, I, I would imagine there's just a tremendous amount of transferable skills between, you know, being a machinist and being into guitars. It just seems like that, that, that idea of precision, although the idea of pre precision might bog you down in guitars a little bit. Look at those. Look. Yeah, well, it's not metal, but you know, it, all of it's relatable. It's so fascinating. You're totally right. I, I mean, all of my tools that I brought from the machine trade are either directly useful in guitar repair or have a counterpart that works really great. Mm -hmm. So there's my machining calipers. I've got my uh, my imperial, my metric calipers. Cool. Let's uh, let's just start pulling pulling drawers. Let's see what we got. You got, you got some wire okay. brushes. Oh, your indexing, Teflon indexing from Stu Mac. I don't, I don't like these. They're, they're not the right taper for anything. I'll tell you a little secret. If you if you chuck them up in a drill, and then yeah. just lightly run them through the uh, the bridge hole that you're gonna actually use, it'll kind of uh, form them into that into that shape, and then you get you get a tighter fit. Okay, um, thanks. So melt it in a little bit. Melt it in a little bit, exactly. Did you know that you can ask your dentist if oh. they have any old tools? Yeah, dentists love, uh, they love giving away that stuff. They yeah, it's awesome. They're, they're, they're so, so good. good. And, and they're, they're way better than the things you can get from the hardware store that are supposed to do that thing. Like, a lot like of times I, do, I just wind up uh, turning them all into little little miniature punches and, and uh, awls. But, yeah. <laughs> What do we got here? Oh, well, this, this is a sharp drawer. You got your uh, Eagle Claw fret cleaning, uh, fret slot cleaning mm -hmm. tool there. I, I know that one, yeah. Yep. Very important. Oh, do you do you ever trim your uh, your sandpapers like these these abrasives at all? I've got a dedicated little blade for that. Yeah. It's got its own its own um, blade, you know, collection like. Uh -huh. Words are gone. It's got its own blades. They're not at all like the blades that I use for this, which I never use on the abrasives. Yeah. And which those ones all double as scraper, like scraper blades. I can custom make them to the length I want. I they're indispensable for cleaning off after I've removed the bridge. You know, Adam Savage just did a uh, a whole thing on his snap blade uh, knife. I I never got into him, and I don't know why. But after watching his thing, I, I, I figured maybe I'll give it a while or give it a little bit as a daily driver and see if I could get get away from the number eleven exacto blades. Because man, those are expensive. Hey, what was that name again? Adam Savage. Uh, yeah, tested. You remember uh, the show MythBusters? I'm not sure if. Uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, he's got a he's got a YouTube channel called Tested where he does uh, he's big into prop design and and uh, all that kind of stuff and he's uh, there's all kinds of little little brick and brack things that he does in props that are are uh, groovy little ideas for for doing guitar stuff. Oh, cool. So and then oh, you've, you've got your uh, right. you've got your empty, empty tofu containers over there for. These are the best size, man. Yeah. Hey, look at all the stuff you can fit in them. I know. Like everything. Reduce even reduce. even the two big stuff is it's big enough to hold them up. Yeah. Reduce, reuse, so, recycle. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm really rolling, I'll have a few of those, and even when you've got a couple screws in them, they still stack up. So I label the container with who's who's oh, what it is. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea, and then you can you can stack them up as uh, individual parts of the the project yeah you got it okay so we got a few more drawers in the machinist thing yeah got some uh feeler gauges i know those ones oh no wait that's see. thread Let's... count that's thread count right Good. but i'm thinking of, of getting that sumac uh thread tester kit that looks so much easier than trying to eyeball it against these yeah. um I, yeah, yeah i really make those work and my really eyes are going to shit too so now's not the time to hold tiny things up to other tiny things <laughs> um, what's what's the thing with the uh, digital readout there and the uh, is that an angle finder or what what is that? Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's like, like a protractor, protractor but okay. you know what? The battery dies so fast that I don't think I'd rebuy that 
particular product? Not endorsed. And then you got the, the manual angle finder there. Yeah. From Machinist yeah. School. It's pans. Oh, and post. Got extra fees. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's no, you're not going to see any ancient pencils here, but these are, you know, they've been around a while. Good old paint markers. Tim Frick and his, his pencils is just, it's, it's really something. And then some yeah. more. Uh, you got some uh, China markers there, those grease pencils, or? Oh, uh, no, no, just, you know, just, you know what? This, this one's just a boring old pencil crayon, but it's perfect for using under a bridge to make sure you flattened it. Oh, OK. Yeah. And what's lurking about on the top of that thing? <laughs> this, this is kind of messy. Uh -oh. Calculator. Uh, on, in each of my toolboxes around the house, and I've got about three, I always have a measuring tape in the top right corner. I do not want to wonder where a measuring tape is ever, ever, ever. I've got, I've okay. got three measuring tapes because the, the previous two had been lost. Well, that's just, you just, just won, won the game. game. Yeah. Well, now I got yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. I had that same, same philosophy with pencils for a while. I'll just have a hundred pencils always kind of floating around. But I think that's, uh, yeah, I, I, that's such a stoner move. Let's see. So you got, oh, you got the, uh, those abrasive, uh, cords up on the, up on the wall there. That's yeah. green. Yep. What do you, uh, what do you like using those for? That, that just, uh, hanging about for just cuz? Well, aren't they pretty? But no, I actually do use them. Um, I'll use them to polish out nut slots sometimes, like if we have a serious um, string catching issue on a nut slot or under the string trees or, yeah, saddle sometimes if there's some breakage. What grid are they? That is an excellent question that I don't know the answer to. I could tell you the, the width they are. Okay. They they yeah. feel like what like about four hundred or something like that would you say or? Yes, about, about four hundred. I I am really. All right. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're great. Not, we're not playing stump the loot here, so we'll we'll move on. You have my case. Yeah. So what's this? Is this uh is that uh junk? junk? Is that your barn barn finds and whatnot? That's right, yeah. So either it's something that a client gave up on or it's uh, something that a family member passed over or mm -hmm. um, I had a friend who was an exquisite dumpster diver. He gave me a few of those. Yeah, that's yep. good. Uh, you never know when you're going to pull, pull something off of them or get, get inspired to get them back together. Or... Practice a thing. Uh-huh, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Like there's a massive top crack. That'd be, that'd be fun to clean up. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, when your kids get old enough, you can start... You can start training them on that kind of stuff too. That's right. One of these is the key guitar. Oh yeah, this one. I got, they've mashed up the sound hole. They're helping me file the sound hole out. Oh. I think that's to help big arm luthiers. They might be making a redesign of the sound hole. Oh, God, I I am one of those big arm luthiers, unfortunately, and it sucks so bad. <laughs> well, we might have a product for you in about ten years. Outstanding. So, what are those little blocks up there? Is that is that buffing compound or is those this? This is just a chunk of metal. Chunk of metal? Uh, I wish I had one. Just, that. just some weights. Um, yeah. Handy for when I'm tapping in. I'll show you here. When I'm tapping in the frets or hammering in the frets, I'll hold the weight under here. That's how I learned to absorb the shock. I learned that way too. I'm the Taylor Buck. Are those uh, Dan Earlywine's videos to your right there? Yeah. Oh, he would love to know that those are out in the wild and inspiring people. Got some fretting. Uh, I got a couple of the trade secrets. Um, fretwork. Fretwork. Oh, I don't know where my. You know what? I really don't know where my camera is. There we go. Fretwork. Trade secrets. And you got the old Hideo Kamamoto book in there too, and Dan's uh, repair guide. Yeah, that that book right there that got me started. I'll tell you what. The, the shop that I, I grew up in, uh, he was not a big fan of measuring to, to set action. It was kind of all by feel. And uh, that, that old... book was the first one where I was like, Dan Earlywine says you can measure. And I would point to it and go, all right, I'm measuring now. Because it was just, he, there was just no winning with, with doing stuff by feel. Oh, no man. way to talk to the customer or no way to, you know, so. Can I get real with you for a minute? Sure. 
I, I try, try to, to get, get into, into those books. Um, you, you know, know some, sometimes I haven't read one of them all the way through yet. yet. They're not but they're God. great for falling asleep, too. Yeah, they're really terrific. Sure. Sometimes, like, sometimes, like, especially the trade secrets, secrets one, I can get through about two or three trade secrets, secrets and I think this is just how I'm wired, but if I'm lying in bed reading a book, two or three, and I am out. But they... Uh-oh. Um, but they usually, uh, they usually inspire thoughts later. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I definitely... Uh, I'm a picture learner. Like, I would look at the pictures and go, huh. So that's how you do that, and then rah, rah, grab a hold of things, and then figure it out. You know, like, but, but yeah, the words. Oh wait, I, I should have actually read that because now I'm in real deep. deep. Uh -huh. But I, I know, know where, where to get, get the information. information. I read, I saw, I saw that, that picture, picture somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear that. Yeah, I'm, I'm no uh, guitar historian. You want to, you want to put me to sleep? Like, anything about like, you know, what year Martin changed their bridge pins? Like any of that stuff? Like, oh boy, I'm. I'm snoozing so hard after after one, one page of that. I think you and I would get along really well in the shop. We yeah. would not add to anyone's information yeah. bank, but I think you and I would be speaking the same language. Did you see the little Martin? Oh, yeah, that was a cool old Martin. Yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting if we knew a little more about it? Can't be bothered. Makes me sleepy. I got a semi-old item as I got to work on. Okay, getting back to the drawers. I want to see more drawers. Okay, so we got a little part Yep. So I don't have tusk stuff. I think, I, with, with the exception of maybe this black one here, which I got because we were maybe doing something for somebody. I, I just, I'm exclusively bone material because I can do everything to it, yeah. and it's fine. Yeah, I, I worked with a lot of Tusk at uh, when I was working at Breedlove, and I, I don't hate it. Like, as the uh, as kind of the off-brand bone uh, substitute, it's it's one of the better ones, but it smells, it, the smell of it gives me PTSD from working in a guitar factory, I'll, I'll tell you that much right now. Oh, okay. But, uh, so you got a little, little, little bit of parts, but you're, yeah. not, you're not, like, overwhelmed with parts. So, is that, is that I your... Can't. I can't, I can't. I can't have so many parts. I a don't have space, and b don't have the the request for them. So we have a lot of the standard stuff in stock. And um, remember that I'm not uh, the electronics person. My husband is, but like we've got some 250, some 500k long shafts, short shafts, uh, output jacks, a couple different kinds of switches. Um, and, and then, then some, some screws, screws over there, there some, some springs, springs and, and, and the, the nut, nut material. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty much, much and batteries. batteries. Uh, uh, we, we have, have two what? kind of, well, well we, we just, just have the Dider strings, strings in stock. If, if anybody wants something else, they got to bring them. them. Or I'll, I'll go, go get them. them but remember, I got to get kids in my car. I got to drive it to the music store to do that. So there's a little bit of an extra charge there. Uh-huh. Yep. That's, that's that's my theory. theory. Like I've, if, if, if I, I need, need to get, get something in, in, and this sucks, you guys have it way better with Sumac being, being in your country. country but uh, yeah, yeah, if I need something, then the customers either gotta wait for me to order it, or um, or I gotta really, I gotta really need it bad to get it fast because it's expensive to get it over the border. Yeah, what what is the upcharge for that? Is it like a is, oh, it like man. A, is it like a standard fee or is there is it just something that they is it a percentage that they tack on with like customs and all that kind of stuff it's, it's tough, tough for me to be able, able to answer, answer that straight off, off but it feels like it feels like it's an extra 60 bucks mm -hmm. every time i order and oh and um, you know there's there's, there's the exchange rate and there's there's, There's the customs, customs and the duties, and, duties and uh, it's, it's just that I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go into business smuggling uh, guitar shit over the border. Jeez, I would be your first customer, and, and I wouldn't tell anyone else. else. Yeah, I promise I would be discreet. All right, turn to your right just just a little bit. There was a, a lamp over there I wanted to ask you about. What's this industrial looking lamp? Is this is this how is this where you're heating for heating bridges yeah. off and stuff? Or yeah, you got it. Awesome. I cooked the bridges off of it. Um, it's super low tech, but I've got it on an old hanger wire and up above my middle bench, I've got some nails in the joists there. So I select 
how how, how far I want the lamp from, from the bench, bench top. top. Oh, okay. Based on nail I choose. No, that's that's awesome because you know, like those I, I use that lamp, uh I use that same bulb in my swing arm desk lamp, but it just it heats it up and it, it I think it uh because the swing arm desk lamps are so cheaply made now, I think it uh, leads to them failing earlier. You've got a nice swing arm desk lamp, though. That's a vintage one right there. Oh, that's, that's from, from my grandpa. grandpa. Yeah, oh, we're talking about grandpa's tools again. Me and, uh, uh, me and three... Danny talked about. It's, it made it's hard one. I got about three or four things in here from grandpa, and he wasn't big into tooling or, or you know, woodworking or anything i don't i don't have that impression of it but he got he got the job done yeah um but i love i've got my workmate bench out in the garage is his old one this lamp that lamp yeah, that's a good oh yeah magnifying lamp yep and uh and this old vice solid stuff yeah. Solid stuff from a different generation. Making, you know, they were well back then, eh? Making the cut for the next. So what's that little, uh, going back to the clamp cubby uh, corner. Yeah. So you got all the, all the stew, you got a nice selection of clamps there. It's the Stumac, uh, the Blackies, couple Clemsias. Yeah. What are those, uh, the things with the wing nuts on there? Are those uh, bridge calls or what, what are those? Oh. I, I can't, can't remember, remember right off the top, top of my head what job I used that for, but you know what, maybe it was a, like a headstock repair. Oh, okay. So I drilled some indexing holes for those bolts so that I can move them in or out, um, fit them over whatever. And, and then what's cool about them is once I've got them both on the neck of the guitar, mm -hmm. I can use the inner tube, the bike inner tube, which functions like the... I don't know, like, like elastic cord, cord. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do, do some really complicated glue ups and clamp ups. That's cool. So you uh, that that makes a lot of sense. So that's your that's basically your headstock glue up uh, clamping situation. That's really good. I think that when things, things get hairy, hairy when things get really hairy, hairy those especially when the headstock is all the way off, off and you, you need, need to have, have the force pulling down, down and holding, holding this way. way. Yep. Yeah, man, and these these, these really, really help in a pinch. pinch. And is is that uh, phenolic or what is the material on that? Uh, what's, what's that, that question? question? Uh, oh, the the it, what, what's that? Uh, what are those clamps made out of? Is it phenolic or is it uh, wood or? I couldn't. The, this? Yeah. This here? Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the wood. wood it's, it's just, just a hardwood. Hard I don't oh, know. It's, it's a scrap of hardwood. hardwood. Oh, oh, but hey, do you? What about um? The, the cork, cork inside. inside. Do you, you get, get fussy about your cork, cork inside your clamps? clamps? You know, uh, I I haven't. I've got some cork, and I haven't had problems with it. I was just talking to Dan uh, not too long ago, and he's had some issues with uh, cork doing damage to finishes. So I don't think. I think basically the bottom line is not all cork is is the same. Yeah. So, so like, here's cork or cork. cork. Uh huh. And it's fine. But, but I, I went and I got, got let me see if I, okay, so this is called rubberized cork. Mm -hmm. And it comes in great big sheets. I don't know how it does with all finishes, but man, I really, I really like making clamps out of that stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot of my, a lot of my calls are actually, and I, I don't think Harbor Freight has this anymore, but they used to have like 99 cent rubber sanding blocks. And I would just cut up, they were like the perfect density for uh, making making like bridge clamping calls and stuff oh that's um, smart um but okay so what's up on that shelf you got a few ointments and preparations up there looks like oh yeah lotions, some lotions, lotions and potions, potions over here, here. Uh, yeah, yeah there's, there's my crazy, crazy glue uh-huh stuff couple blues and stuff i'll be running you up some uh, glue boost when uh when I, I make my uh my smuggling run Oh, I want to. I want to know, know what, what that, that stuff can do. Well, the accelerator, the accelerator alone is worth the price of admission. It, it's just, it doesn't fuck around. It's, it's, it doesn't turn the the glue white. It, uh, it always works. Um, and a big fan. The the glue, uh, like for gel CAs, I still go grab uh, Loctite from 
from Home Depot. That's my favorite gel. But the, oh, yeah. the fill and finish glue for finish work, I mean, there's nothing like it. I mean, it works under under nitro, and uh, it's just uh, there's there's nothing like it. And when you build it up as a finish, it looks crazy. It looks it looks just like uh, it doesn't look like nitro. I'd say it looks like a good catalyzed polyurethane, uh, like a, a Paul Reed Smith finish or something like that. But mm -hmm. like I've had some Paul Reed Smith dings that I've done where the line, the layer line was so subtle that it was, you know, it wasn't invisible, that it was the best, best uh, catalyzed finish, finish repair I've ever done. So okay. I praise for that stuff. So you got some nail polish remover up there? Yeah. 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 And what's in the, what's in the little uh, pill bottle there? Little gold powder for gold top. Uh, baking, baking soda. Baking it's soda. A yellow, it's, it's a, a yellow, yellow bottle. It's, it's just it's baking, baking soda, soda like nut filler, nut slot, slot filler. filler. Yeah. yeah, a couple of the, a couple of the trusty, trusty wood, wood colors. colors. Yeah, cool. Just because like, I've, I've got, got I, I've got, got a little sanding, sanding station here. here. Oh, cool. That's, That's handy. handy. What are you doing? What are you doing for, you know, kind of dust collection? Are you just shop backing things, or do you have like a do you have a dedicated desk collector for all that kind of stuff? Well, I try to keep it really minimal in here. So I do have the shop back that I can move all around because I do have, a, there's a drill press and then I've got my sanding station as well as, you know, whatever, whatever dust kicks up through the course of working. Um, but mainly I've got a shop outdoors. Well, my garage doubles as uh, my dusty workshop. So, so in the, in the winter, winter, I've got to move all the vehicles out, but in the summer, summer it is mine. mine. So, so I've got, got half the garage, um, and what have I got? A 14-inch bandsaw, and uh, I think a, a maybe a 4-inch or 6-inch wide belt sander with a, yeah, with a, with a, what, belt sander and a drum? I don't, like, what's the, it's got the disc on it, too. Yeah, it's got a disc, disc belt combo. Disc. Yeah, 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 disc belt, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and, and out, out there, there I've got, got a heavy-duty heavy dust collector because because <laughs> back when I started all this, I fit, I fancied that I could probably be a guitar builder and a guitar maker, or sorry, maker and repairer, uh -huh. and that would probably work fine. So I I'm glad I invested the money and tools when I did because there isn't the budget for it now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how anybody buys all the stuff it takes to uh, build a guitar and. And then think that they're gonna sell it. I mean, I, I, I you got a lot more Not confidence profit, than I got. Buddy. What's that? Not, Not at a profit. profit. Yeah. Poof. Poof. All right. Yeah. So you got oh. the neck popper oh. jig up there. Oh, what do you got under there? Oh, nice Love spool clamps. Are those homemade? Make some spool clamp, right? Are those homemade? Yes, sir. Oh, that warms my heart. I love yep. a good handmade uh, spool clamp. And you got some rags under there. You're using uh, torn up uh, shirts rather than like shop towels or. That's right. For, for the, the most part, part uh, for the most part, part, I'll use a little, little well, well sized, sized bits of paper, paper towel. towel. Mm -hmm. But when, when I need a rag, I've got, got a little close to that. that. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mindfully, mindfully using, using my resources. resources. Yeah. So up up to the right, you got one of the Stumac uh, neck popping jigs. That's how you. That's your uh, getting getting the necks out of the pockets. I use it. I, I do, do like, like it. it. Uh -huh. Um, I, I got, got advice early on to use a wedge. This, this is, is too big for most guitars, guitars but sometimes, sometimes it fits in between the the screw and the heel of the guitar. But anyway, a wedge thing to make sure the pressure is going. Um, down when, when you're, you're pushing, pushing the neck out. out. Yeah, because you yeah you can munch a, you can munch a heel going the other way. I actually modded mine. I I, I took that aluminum bar off, and then yeah. I, I just have a piece of uh, square metal tubing that I I drilled two holes in to go up the uh, the carriage bolts there, and then yeah. I I, may, I'm, I just push that up with the wing nuts on on the carriage bolts, and I don't I don't have that like adjustable foot thing. And that will actually conform to the angle of the uh, heel cap pretty pretty well. So you're, you're pushing, pushing like, like your your metal, metal bar takes this space, and, space you're and you're pushing, pushing that full. Yeah, except so instead of being al aluminum, it's it's um, yeah uh, serious steel steel square stock, and 
you know, like that aluminum, it's got so much give in it. Like you can deflect quite a bit and you're not getting the pressure. It's kind of nice though, because some people will put too much pressure on it and munch a, you know, munch a heel. Yeah. But, uh, I'm, I'm often, often worried, worried about how much, how much turn, turn I've got to put, put on this. And I feel like shit as that goes, I'm probably going to strip, strip that hole before I get the guitar off. off. I, I've, I've, stri I've stripped two of those. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. happen. Yeah, it'll happen. It it does, it probably wouldn't happen with me much anymore from from going to like either the heat stick or the tiny tiny heaters because with those I just put like a little bit of pressure on it and I walk I walk away for a half an hour and I come back and the necks usually slid out so I don't have the same struggles with uh, neck pulling that I used to have with with steam. I can't, I can't wait to see, see more about your designs, your designs of that the, the tiny, tiny heaters. heaters. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple stuff. It's not it's not overly complicated. That's actually Frank Ford's, uh, I, I sent uh, Frank Ford one of the cartridge heaters when I was first using cartridge heaters. And within like 15 minutes, he fired back that genius level stuff as Frank Ford is uh, known to do. So, um, wow. Hey, what's in the, uh, you got a little uh, parts bin down and to your right a little bit? This one. Yeah, what's, what's going on in there? Yeah, we just, we just got, got some, some screws. screws. There's, There's some, 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 some of the, the bone cross and some. some screws and so fast fasteners yeah well this is all well this is all guitar related stuff right, right. there's some string trees and tunematic parts but uh over in this one is my fasteners like um this is the part of my shop that kind of goes from being grace's guitar workshop to the household gear so like all right claw hammer big old deck screws and uh -huh. stuff but I bet it I bet it overlaps just a little bit. It does because, because well, this, this is the best place to work on anything. anything so yeah. I'll always take, take that stuff down here to do it anyways. anyways. Yeah. So uh, who's handier, you, you or your husband? Do you guys have handy wars? Do you guys are you competitively handy? We are not competitive. Okay. I, I take, take the cake. cake. Ah, it's it's not competitive. <laughs> you are competitive. But you, I hope you he doesn't mind me saying that, that, but I, I, we, we know. When, when, when we, we have, have a weekend, weekend off, uh, um, a, a weekend off together, together then, then I'm in the garage, garage working on something, and he's inside, inside teaching, teaching the kids, kids to bake, or they're, they're working, working on, on uh, music or dance moves or something. Or something. He's, he's fantastic. He's a great dad, but God, I got to get out and I got to work on stuff when I have free time. Yep, 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 yep. Little little brick practice. And then, yeah. uh, well, you, you know, know these, these are just the chintzy things. I think these ones were hand-me-downs, though. These might have also come from Griff. I'm not sure. So are those the dial indicators for your for a neck jig? You got the... Yeah. Where, where's that living at? Oh. Okay. Do you, where, do you, where do you set that up at? I clamp it to the bench. Um, you know what I've done? I've just drilled a couple of holes in the bench. Uh, one on either side, and then I will. Oh shoot! And then I will um, just use some bolts to put that through. And then do those T nuts that, that slide slide into the the exactly. extrusion. Yep, you got it. Cool. Oh, you got some kind of clamping system on the end of the bench there. What's what's that crazy yep. looking rubber stuff? Uh, so I learned how to build from Sergey Young, and when Sergey, when it got to finish time or standing time, Sergey had these things called trojies, and I cannot remember where we got them from now. But I, anyways, um, this, so this is based on the idea of a troji, so it's just a clamp. It's just got this screw to tighten that up, and it'll hold the body. Oh, so this is where I do my neck removals. So I'll, I'll hold, hold the, the guitar, guitar in here, and then have, have access, access to the whole neck there. Oh, that's some fancy stuff. I like that a lot. Can you can you throw a guitar in that and, and tighten it up? Yeah. 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 I'm a little jealous of the of the orange pipe insulation. I don't know that we get that down here. Of the which? The orange pipe insulation that you've got in in there. <laughs> Oh, that is a pool noodle. Oh, pool noodle. Okay, I thought it was pipe insulation. Look at this thing. Oh, man. Yeah, That's and it, pretty cool. it can hold, it can it can hold, hold pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Like, you, maybe you wouldn't want to scrape binding in it, but it's it's good. It's good upright. 
positioning for all kind of repairs, I would think. Yeah. And what what's the material that's holding it? Is that like a foam or is it? Yeah. Okay, just regular old uh, foam. Just, just I don't know, know maybe, maybe like old mattress, mattress foam. Cool. Awesome. Um, if, if I was, I was worried, worried about the finish, finish I'd throw a T-shirt around it mm -hmm. and then put, put that in the cradle. Cool. All right. So let's see. Are we missing anything? Boy, these go by fast in, in small uh, small spaces. So you yeah, have, like you like you like the neck jig. You, you use it uh, all the time, or are you uh, only on on certain uh, certain things? Um, I would say I, I, I use, use it some, some of the times. times. If, if it's just a kind of a light, light looks, looks like no trouble kind of situation, situation that I won't plant it. Because one of my mentors, mentors told me that, that he's made it 40 years in the biz, biz and has never clamped. So uh, that works I for him. That. I should hate be this argument. Hey? Uh, I, as, a, as an old guy who's been in the biz for 30 years, I have a really hard time with those arguments. Like, I, I try to resist them, but they, they do crop up in my mind, too. I'm starting to get that age where I'm like, well, I've been doing this for... But, boy, it's a sign of being old, isn't it? I think that it's a sign of experience, but yeah. I don't think we should let our fear of new or our fear of spending money um, yeah. kind of drive that mechanism, as long as it's for the right reasons. Yeah. As in, the customer is getting great service, and, and you have a great solution that I don't think that you should be fighting it. Yeah. So I just had a, a, a little cake come and join me. Let me see. I want to see. I want to see. You want to see this guy? Okay? Yeah, who is this? Who are you? I'm Lucas. Lucas, hi. How are you? Uh, good. Awesome. Okay, okay this, this one has, has the busiest, busiest fingers. fingers. He's, He's the, the one I most have to watch out for in my shop. shop. He'll take my, my hammers out and he'll just start hitting around on the floor. He, he loves it. it. Chisels, he'll, he'll just... I, sharp ends. He loves the sharp ends. Oh, my God. Which makes me nervous. nervous. Yeah, it'll be taking uh, screw heads off before you know it. I think so. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had, had them working a little bit. bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah. that's a cla that's a classic uh, kid getting in trouble with tools thing is, is popping screw heads off with with grandpa's yeah. chisel or dad's chisel. Grandpa's chisel. So what do you think? Oh, yeah. should, I, should I let you go and get get back to parenting, or you wanna you want you got anything else you wanna show us? I think you've pretty much seen it all. Um, that's all the guitar-related stuff. I've got knickknacks hidden all over old old lives past, but that's all the guitar cool. stuff. Oh, this has been fun. Grace, thank you so much for uh, doing this uh, for the channel. And can you do me a favor? Can we, let's see, can I get a shot? Can you do like a, like a selfie shot, like, and try to get as much of your... Uh, your uh, shop as possible. Maybe back out in the couch area just a little bit. Okay. Pretty backlit. Awesome. I'll do that as the, the screen capture. Thank you so much, cool. Grace. Ian, this was so cool. Yeah. I cannot believe it, man. I have admired you for so long. This is so cool. Well, I'm, I'm admiring everybody. We've been, I think we've been Instagram uh, friends for I would think probably four or five years or something, wouldn't you say? You and me? Yeah. Maybe a year, buddy. You Maybe a year. I've only been on Instagram for two years, I think. Okay. Well, I get. But it's been long. I get confused about who I've I've seen for a long time. They come and go too. Like, I I've uh, I've had people on there that have been there since the beginning. But I think I started in 2015 or something. Oh, you're way ahead of me then. Yeah. It's, yeah, you. I mean, you must be much more of a techie than I am. No, I'm, I'm just always looking for avenues to to blabber about stuff. That's what I'm doing. Like I'm just always, I'm, I'm always looking for a way to be a loudmouth. I really like, um, I really like your community oriented attitude about the social media stuff. Yeah, it's it's been fun, you know. Uh, a lot of it maybe is is. Uh, it might be a little bit of sour grapes too, because I didn't like, you know, I never really, I was never really geared towards ascending to that kind of, as you say, mucky muck uh, thing. But also, it just, I don't know. 
it's another one of those things. If I had gotten into it, I would have torpedoed it anyway for being a loudmouth. So, um, one of those things. So I might as well just stay out of it. But it's been it's been really fun, uh, you know, having uh, yeah, like the community thing. It's uh, a lot has come out of it too. A lot, you know, like the Dan workshops and stuff like that. I don't think, you know, had I not reached out to people on that, I don't know that it would have turned into a, kind of a, a cool, the cool thing that it is. So, is that kind of when you stepped out in front of it? I think that's when I started seeing Ian Davlin instead of Martin Luther King. Yeah, you know, uh, so one of the things with, uh, I, 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 you know, like. I mean, Martin Luther King is, like, nominally offensive uh, 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 Instagram handle. And I kind of wanted that, like, because in the original inception of the, uh, of the Instagram thing was to be about, not to be a thing looking for customers, but to be more about, you know, kind of showing, you know, like inside jokes be between people that are in the business. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, I was like, I, I'm always surprised at people that have figured out who I am from that because I don't really tell people who I am on there. Um, so yeah, it's and it's been really interesting, kind of trying to dance the two the two things, because I do stuff on my Instagram and I do stuff on my YouTube channel that are really counterproductive to uh, impressing customers. You know, like honesty. Well, yeah, honesty and and uh, you know yeah like it's that thing you know like almost people take guitars really seriously and it's like that thing if you went to a doctor and they were just always joking around you know like it would make you wonder if they were you know serious about what they did or not you want a certain amount of of uh gravity you know with with people that are claiming to be professionals but mm -hmm. you know i don't know i'm not I'm not sure Instagram is absolutely helping us the way we can do a before shot and an after shot and say, done, next. Yeah. Because that doesn't show the weight of, you know, when you fuck yeah. something up in the shop and when something just doesn't go your way that day or when it takes you, um, when it takes you way longer to sand that thing than the before and after shots can ever capture. I think that stuff is important to tell aspiring uh, luthiers and repair techs that man sometimes it really sucks and sometimes it goes like magic yeah it's uh it's tough you know like i, I try to uh i try to keep that that real uh real thing but i gotta tell you like i'm a little bit of a dick too because like if i'm taking pictures of touch up of course i'm gonna take it from like the good angles you know like huh? i'm not gonna like I'm not gonna take him from the bed. Well, you know, sometimes I will. I've done a few posts where I've I've shown like, this is the angle where it looks amazing. This is the angle where it sticks out like a sore thumb. So, you know, but yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice to get that, and I'm I'm definitely more respectful of of other repair people online that are that are able to kind of share that. There's a few people that, you know only post the uh the victories for sure but you know i talk you know like i'm i'm friends with some of the best in the business and like yesterday i had that meltdown and i immediately called my friend hugh who's a you know a big shot luthier in uh in nashville and we talked for an hour about throwing temper tantrums in our shop so i'm sitting on a stool that right now is is crooked because i threw a temper tantrum right now or yesterday <laughs> So, but yeah, that's, that's the, that's the real, that's the real stuff of Luthan, you know, is, uh, sucking it up and figuring out how to deal with shit that doesn't go right. Dude, it's super fun. So this Sunday I'm talking to Rosie De Deloach, De Deloach, she's a, a violin luthier and I'm, I'm fascinated to find out what that world is like. I always thought about jumping into it when I would get pissed off at guitars because it's more of a, one of the things that's frustrating about guitars is it's not, it's not standardized. And I was wondering, you know, I'm, I'm interested in finding out is, are, you know, is a sound post patch, a sound post patch, is a sound post patch, like, and all it is, everybody knows how to do it. And then, you know, you know, how you define yourself is how good it turns out, you know, like, or is there, you know, 
you know, or the book, you know, is the book of surprises in the violin world like smaller than the book of surprises in the guitar world, which I think is going to be an interesting interview. But I need to start writing down questions for her. But she owns I, It seems like they have like a unified understanding of what glues to use, of what finishes to use. Whereas mm -hmm. for us, it's like, could be anything. It could be anything. Yeah. And it seems like they all respect the instruments that are expected to last generations. And guitarists, like, not all of the guitars are expected to last generations. It's hopeful, especially the old ones. You want them to keep going. But, like, a, a lot of a lot of those, um, those old violins have had um, life breathed into them again and again and again. It's, it, they're completely, you know, that's another thing to, Think about asking her is they're just completely different forces you know like i'll talk to my friend hugh all the time about like the old martins and he you know he's coming to the conclusion that they aren't forever items you know like they're they're gonna eat them just because the string tension is pulling on the top you know like they're gonna yeah. eat themselves someday and that's just the that's just the the way it is almost kind of like you know i think flamenco guitars are, are designed to be disposable like you're just supposed to play the shit out of them and then they you know they're built so light that they just you know, disappear on a poof of... Uh, they were designed to be cheap instruments, instruments right? right? Like, they, the, the best, best ones, ones weren't expensive ones, yeah. so the, the best players didn't play the most expensive ones yeah. back in those days. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and actually, you know, classical guitar is a respected classical instrument. Is a pretty, it's a pretty modern thing anyway, so if those guys get real high and mighty about classical guitars, it's kind of, kind of funny. Because the rest of the not that you, world does. Nothing you and I know a fuck about, about what they're talking about. Yeah, but the re yeah the rest of the you, you know you talk to violin people about classical guitar and they'll just it's a whole another level of people looking down their nose at other people. <laughs> well, I, I hope, hope you enjoyed that interview. Hopefully, she's nice to you. Oh, she's she's nice. She's she's part of that crew that uh, I think are are real good uh, violin luthiers and. Uh, uh, are are trying to trying to keep it real too. Like, I, it seems like it seems like the violin luthiers are starting to kind of normalize a little bit. But uh, it's it's interesting too because you know nobody nobody bats an eye about a woman being a violin luthier. Like it's not like it's not like oh how how interesting you know like a lady violin luthier. Oh my god you know like it's some it's like. It's like, yeah, the women have been in that in that field. I I used to work with a viol uh, a horn tech, a couple lady horn techs, and it was just like, you know, just another. I don't know what, why it is with guitars that such a big fuss has to be made about about women in in guitar repair or luth, you know, guitar looping. Or guitar playing. It's the same thing. It's yeah. just a it's dude's world that we're trying to say, hey, like, it's it goes for everybody. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I could keep talking to you for another hour, but I have to let you go because uh, I have a pediatrician phone call in a second. Do your thing. It was really good talking to you, Grace. Oh, man. Sorry to say goodbye. This has been so great. All right. Have a good one. Okay, see you, man. Okay, bye.